Hey guys, what's up? Scottish Duck here once again. Um, oh boy, okay, this video is quite long overdue. I should have made this video probably years ago, honestly. And uh, I've definitely talked about this, uh, talked about this, talked about this topic. I'm nervous, can't you tell? Uh, here and there. Uh, but I've never done a full video on it. You follow me on Twitter, you'll know I go on about this a lot. But um, I'm going to talk about Project Diva slash Vocaloid slash Hatsune Miku. Uh, yeah, if you want to know why I'm nervous about this is because as far as I'm concerned, right, Hatsune Miku, like, I'll just refer to the whole thing as Vocaloid from here on out, right? Vocaloid is like, uh, in amongst those, like, franchises that a man in his late 20s just flat out should probably not be into, okay? Probably another famous example, definitely the one that I tend to think of most of the time, is My Little Pony, okay? Yeah, guy in his late 20s, shouldn't they be into it? But, you know, they exist, and there also exists folk into uh, Vocaloid and shit, so, yeah, that's a thing, and I'm kind of one of them, so... I'm gonna talk about the uh, the franchise uh, and all that bollocks here as I tend to do in these um, sort of videos. Um, now, I should probably say this uh, right off the bat, you know, for those of you who don't know, Hatsune Miku Vocaloid is a computer generated uh, Vocaloid voice synthesis software. Uh, people tend to use them as like backing vocals for their songs and all that. And it sort of like took off in Japan, it's this massive like subculture of uh, J pop music using these computer generated songs. Really kicked off, uh, gained a bit of a cult fall, I guess, over here and, uh, you know, outside Japan. And, uh, yeah, the thing about that, though, is, is that it's so huge, it's quite hard to keep track of. Like, there's literally tens of thousands of songs probably out there that get, like, passed around and, you know, in, in rotation. Uh, some of which obviously are more memorable than others, but if you're trying to keep up with it all, it's pretty much impossible. So, the way I've kind of like seen it now is that I just see Vocaloid as a video game franchise, okay? And that video game franchise is, is published and developed uh, by Sega, okay? So, maybe that's another thing that like draws me to this series. You know, the Sega fanboy in me is like, oh no, it's Sega! It's okay to be into this, it's just like Space Channel 5! Uh, except way more weeb and uh, all that bollocks, so yeah. Um, the story as to how I got into this franchise is one that I quite like to tell, it's uh, quite a big one. Let me like recenter this a wee bit. Uh, okay, and uh, it's one I quite like to tell as well. Um, way back in 2010, we got the release of Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing for the PS3 360, Wii, all that. And uh, I was always a massive Sega fanboy, okay? But with the release of that game, it felt like there was a voice in me that just exploded and just wanted to shout so much, you know? Not only was I so happy that a game like that came out, being such a Sega fanboy, it made me just want to shout and, like, um, you know, be a bigger fanboy than I already was, basically. You know, this must be how diehard Nintendo fans feel like with Smash Brothers and stuff, you know, seeing all these IPs that they love so much all come together into a really nice package and all that. Uh, so I can take All-Stars Racing is a fantastic game, of course, as is the even more brilliant sequel, uh, Transformed. Um, but yeah, what I did um, in all my hype for that game, I put a video on my channel, Top 10 Characters I Want to See in Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing. Quite a few of them made it in the sequel, I'm pleased about that. But uh, I also left open, as you tend to do in top 10 lists, you know, what would, I asked, like, my viewers at the time, what would you guys think? And I got a lot of comments of uh, different Sega characters, pretty much all of which I knew about. But uh, then there came one that I didn't know about. Somebody recommended Hatsune Miku, and I'm like, Hatsune Miku? Who the fuck is Hatsune Miku? I don't know this. So I immediately, like, Googled it. And I found this green-haired anime girl, and I recognized her because she was, like, all about in, like, little tidbits of uh, Japanese-related news and stuff. So, I was a it was more like I was finally able to put a name to the image of this cute green-haired anime girl. And at the time, I saw, okay, 
It's a PSP game developed by Sega, only released in Japan, which was obviously a, has always been a common thing. Uh, I kind of just left it at that. I figured, all right, it's just like Space Channel Five. That's cool. Then, uh, like, uh, fast forward uh, a bit of time. Uh, this was around the time that the um, uh, fuck, who is it? Uh, who, who is it that runs the React channel? Who got a lot of shit just like uh, the other year there for trying to copyright React. Basically, when they were sort of in their prime and they were doing like the whole kids React and teen React stuff, they did a a kids react of Hatsune Miku. And a friend of this sent me this, you know, probably knowing I was like a Sega fan and that, and I'm just like, kids react to Hatsune Miku, because I knew what kids react was. They take something that is like, I guess something worth reacting to, and give it, show it to the kids and they react to it, and of course, it's amusing and stuff. And so I'm just like, immediately I'm just like, what is it about Hatsune Miku that there is to react to? It's a fucking cute anime girl, uh, for the P it's a game for the PSP, what the fuck is this? So I immediately start watching the video. And what actually occurred was Hatsune Miku performing live to an actual audience as a hologram singing one of her songs. And my reaction mirrored that of the kids completely when I first saw this. I was like, what the fuck? Why is a hologram playing music and folk are cheering for it and I'm just like, I'm just completely, my mind is blown. I'm like, this is unbelievable, this is stupid. And I immediately became so much more interested in Hatsune Miku and in Vocaloid in general. I started doing little bits of research and there was also a lot of like other uh, live songs on YouTube uh, and all that. I remember this one particular live performance that Miku was doing. I actually watched it a fair bit and I'm like, why do I keep watching this? And I realized that I found the songs catchy. Someone had left a comment of like the names of all the songs from all the different timestamps. I started to look them up and it kind of went on from there. I became more and more addicted to the music and the characters and stuff. And yeah, here I am today making a video for the internet about my love for Vocaloid, so go me in. Eh? So that was pretty much my history there. Okay, I'm gonna start, um, see this whole video was actually supposed to be a review slash thoughts on Hatsune Miku Pro uh, Future Tone, um, which just came out a couple months ago there, but we've been getting like DLC coming out now all the time. But now I'm just gonna go through all the games in the series just to show it off. Now, the thing about these uh, this series is that they're pretty much just like compilations of uh, uh, songs and stuff, you know? There's not much to the gameplay. You can literally watch gameplay of any Project Diva game and get it immediately how you play it, you know? So, not much to it in that sense. So you're pretty much here for the songs, I would say. Now, there was a trilogy for the PSP. This was the first time it was released. You got Hatsune Miku Project Diva. Hatsune Miku Project Diva 2nd, and Hatsune Miku Project Diva Extend, which I didn't actually own until like a couple months ago. I was surprised I never owned this one. Um, but yeah, they're all like, they're all, it's sort of a trilogy, but they all kind of like share the same songs as well, so they're also kind of expansion packs of each other. But uh, these are like, I gotta say, these are proper nostalgic for me, these ones, okay? A lot of the songs in here are some of my absolute favourites, you know? Um, and the great thing about it was that because obviously it was a very um, Japan only thing, uh, a lot of things on YouTube were available. You know, a lot of people had recorded the uh, songs from the game, and there was actually some Japanese DLC for your PS3, which allowed you to play games from these, uh, play songs, sorry, from these games with uh, PS3 style graphics. And they made for really good, like, music videos and shit. They really did. And. Uh, I just spent so much time listening to them. Uh, eventually, I got around to actually importing a couple of these, and uh, and it was uh, really fun to finally play the songs that I had been like uh, listening to constantly for so long, you know. But uh, yeah, it, it kind of just kept going on like that, you know. It was still very much um, a Japan-only thing. But uh, then about um, I can't even mind what year it is, but basically one of the next games to come out was. Um, Hatsune Miku Project Diva F. Now this was the first game developed for the uh, for the Vita and also had a PS3 version as you can uh, see here. 
And I was hyped for this game, you know, and there was like a lot of back and forth about whether or not this would actually be localized, and I was very like behind it. I was like, please localize this shit, Sega. I actually imported the Japanese Vita version and the, yeah, the Japanese uh, PS3 version until I finally got the American PS3 version because we never got a physical version over here. It was digital only, which was shite, but yeah, I own three versions of this fucking game. And, um, it's really good, it's really good. It's a little bit weaker than the soundtrack from the uh, previous games, I would say. Uh, so that kind of stifled it a wee bit, but I was still, like, incredibly hyped, obviously. Uh, and then, like, uh, a year later, we got Hatsune Miku uh, Project Diva F Second, which we actually did get a physical release for, so... And, uh, I will be honest, at about this point, I kind of bought this out of obligation. My Vocaloid phase kind of, like, died a wee bit. And uh, I remember being particularly disappointed with this one because um, usually you get like 40 songs in a Vocaloid game and uh, you know 20 of them were brand new but 20 of them were actually from the PSP trilogy and that just felt really cheap to me. It's like, uh, it felt like I was only getting like 20 new songs instead of like 40 which, you know, I mean there were some repeats in this one as well but nowhere near uh, as much as this so... The, the F-Series is kind of like a low point for me, honestly. Um, it's, uh, even, even though, like, obviously, there was a lot of good stuff in here, just not as good as the uh, PSP trilogy. But uh, when all that was going on, you know, there was released for the 3DS what is probably my favourite uh, Project Diva game. And it's not even Project Diva, it's uh, Project Mirai. Now, this is... Hatsune Miku Project Mirai DX, what that means is that it's uh, Hatsune Miku Project Mirai 1 and 2, which were released in Japan, then they compiled the two together and released it over here, which was really nice, and simply put, apart from like now using the Nendoroid design of uh, Miku, which I have one here, holy shit, um, which is like way too adorable, um, it's just got the best song selection, quite frankly, and a lot of fun little mini games, including a full version of Poyo Poyo, and the uh, other like stuff that is in other Vocaloid games. So, but the song list is the main thing that really makes this my favorite, you know, for sure. Um, and yeah, ever since like they started sort of started steadily releasing these, it's they've kind of not stopped, and we've been getting a healthy supply of like Vocaloid since then. Uh, one of the other latest releases, which, again, they went back to, like, only physical in America, not over here. I don't know why they're, they keep going back and forth with that. But, uh, Hatsune Miku Project Diva X, which was actually, which may have been one of my least favourites, possibly. Um, simply because there's so fewer songs, and, again, there's, like, so few in this one, I can hum. I don't know what it was, there was just so many, eh, songs in here. Uh, even though, like, there was, again, some nice little new things that you got in here, uh, like a story mode of all things, and uh, that's another thing I should point out. It's not just Hatsune Miku that uh, you, like, control through these games. There's actually six main Vocaloids, including Miku, and, uh, yeah, you just, like, they all have different voices and they all have different songs, obviously, um, and you actually got to see them, like, interact as proper characters. Even though the characters were paper thin, it was still really interesting being such a big fan all this time and seeing them interact like that, so... Uh, that and, like, I think I need to give the game more of a chance to, like, grow on me, really. It's funny, because I kind of put this in my top 10 games of 2016 list uh, at the end of last year. Uh, pretty much because I needed the number 10, you know? I'm... I sound like I'm really giving the game a lot of shit, I'm not, it is actually really good, um, so, yeah. But, if you're gonna play any Hatsune Miku game for the PS4, you need to play Hatsune Miku Future Tone, okay? You can, it's download only, but it's okay because Japan had it download only as well, and it has 200 and, what was it, I think it was 224 songs. Uh, and they are all songs ranging from, like, all the games I just showed you. I, I, except this one, except X, this is still too new. Even though there is one or two songs from this game in Future Tone, you know, pretty much almost every song that I'm holding in my hand, you can download for, like, 40 quid off PS, the PlayStation Store right now, you know? 
And yeah, it's an unbelievable deal. It really is. All those songs, all that music for just that much. And they're all remade in 1080p, 60 frames per second. It's it's a really it's a real treat for uh, fans of Vocaloid for sure. So yeah, there's again, there's really not much point in talking about the gameplay because again, you could just look at the gameplay and t know exactly how you're playing it. Not everybody's going to be into that sort of thing, but you know, it's there. It's a brilliant deal, and I would uh, really recommend it. So yeah, I finally did a video on Vocaloid. Um, yeah, that was that was fun, wasn't it? Yeah, that was that was that was fun, wasn't it? Was, I'll, I'll not talk about it again. I apologize. So, yeah, that's that's that, guys. See you after. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. Sorry, Miku.